Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to St. Peter's of the Valley Episcopal Church Morning Prayer Rite 2 this first Sunday after the Epiphany, the Baptism of our Lord. I'm the Reverend Wendy Huber, the priest at St. Peter's of the Valley Episcopal Church in Basalt, Colorado, and I'm joined by my colleague and friend, the Reverend Richard Paxton, our deacon at St. Peter's of the Valley, who's sharing the gospel this Sunday, as well as our wonderful readers and prayer leaders this Sunday, Ella Gruel, as well as Deborah Smith and her family, and my family, who will be serving as readers this day. We are also blessed to have music provided by our music director, Rachel Rausch, as well as our soloists, Richard and Sherry Paxton. Today we are celebrating morning prayer right too, and morning prayer can remind us especially when we've been asked to physically distance from one another, we are not alone. Our service begins on page 76 of the Book of Common Prayer, or you can see today's service bulletin sent by email as well as on our website. Feel free to respond and join us during prayers and let us enjoy just a moment of silence as we prepare to worship and gather our families, including our furry and four-legged ones, to join us this day. Our opening hymn is available in your pew bulletin, and feel free to join us from home. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Continuing on page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our service continues on page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our voice shall proclaim thy praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us join together in singing the Venite, found on page 82 with our leader soprano, Sherry Paxton.
Please join me in praying in unison the psalm appointed for the first Sunday after the Epiphany, the Baptism of Our Lord Sunday, is Psalm 29, beginning on page 620 in the Book of Common Prayer. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as a king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Our service continues on the top of page 84. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? And they answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our service continues on page 95 with Canticle 21. Let us pray this together. Please join me. You are God. We praise you. You are the Lord. We acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the power of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Oh, no. 
a reading from Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Lord, make quiet our hearts that we may listen to your still small voice so that in hearing your word, we may respond in fervent faith as Jesus led disciples of old, so lead us, your children today. We ask it in his name, amen. Mark's gospel is the only book in the Bible that announces itself as a gospel, the good news about Jesus. A verse we read five weeks ago on the second Sunday of Advent. There is no word in Mark about the birth or youth of Jesus. Mark jumps right in with his good news of Jesus' baptism as the beginning of his ministry. It is the fulfillment of the messenger promised by the prophet Isaiah, a promise that is reiterated by John's own explanation of Jesus' baptism, that his baptism was with water, but Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So we must first consider Jesus' baptism and then move on to our own baptism. John's baptism had two components, repentance and forgiveness. And as John explains what took place with Jesus, he adds that the baptism is not only with water, but with the Holy Spirit. Those elements are still true of baptism today. The baptismal liturgy marks the end of the old life in those words so familiar. Do you renounce? And it goes. And the beginning of a life lived in God's grace and forgiveness. And then John adds a new component with the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is also part of our baptism service. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Later on, toward the close of his ministry, Jesus himself makes clear that baptism leads to a new way of life. When the brothers James and John asked to be seated next to Jesus in the life to come, Jesus points out that the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. To be baptized in Jesus is to follow him. After Jesus finished with his life on this earth and his followers became the early Christian church, they developed what baptism means for each of us. The process starts immediately at Pentecost when God gives the disciples the gift of the Spirit to carry on this new life in Christ. And after his sermon on Pentecost, the listeners ask the Apostle Peter how they should respond. And he answers with these same components of baptism. 
repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins will be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And as we continue in the New Testament, our understanding of what baptism means for us continues to unfold. It always follows faith, the faith of the person being baptized or the faith of the parents. We started our youth confirmation class with six youth from St. Peter's of the Valley coming together by Zoom to consider their own faith. And in our tradition, parents and godparents speak on behalf of a baby or child during baptism. And then as young adults or teens, they confirm what was said on their behalf in their own voices. This means that they are making their affirmation of faith and recognizing that they are sealed as God's own. Following what Jesus said in Mark 10, in baptism we die, as Jesus did, but we are also raised to new life, as Jesus was. This great promise has sustained Christians throughout the centuries. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer was led to his death, he said to one of the prison guards, For some, this is the end, but for me, this is the beginning. One hymn writer, John Visanker's hymn states, You cannot kill me, I've already died. We die in baptism, but we rise up to new life in Christ. Furthermore, baptism is more than an individual act. In baptism, we become part of a people. The Apostle Paul emphasizes how we were all baptized into one body. And the main thrust of today's text and the meaning of Jesus' baptism for us is that we are baptized into something. A fundamental change takes place in baptism at whatever age. An adult who is baptized after accepting faith is changed, and an infant baptized into a family of faith will be brought up into that faith. Someone once argued that he didn't need to be baptized because he was now saved through faith. Baptism, he said, isn't just a right. It doesn't save us. It was true, I said. But I also said that to have faith is to follow Jesus. And Jesus tells us to be baptized, just as he was baptized. He told his nighttime visitor, Nicodemus, that unless one is born of water and the spirit, one cannot enter the kingdom of God. And in baptism, we become part of Christ's body. Paul writes that for one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, and that as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Put on Christ. And in his last conversation with his disciples, Jesus spoke again about baptism. He told them, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. A person who had been baptized as a small infant once said to me, as far as I'm concerned, nothing happened. She did not have a memory of it, but of course we know something dramatic happened and her subsequent life as a Christian was proof of it. We often speak of baptism as a means of grace. That is one of the ways that God's grace comes to us. Physically, we know it's that small splash of water, but it marks the beginning of a whole new life, a life of forgiveness, 
a life of the presence of God's spirit, a life of our union with Jesus, and a life with our becoming part of the worldwide Christian church. The action takes place on the edges of society, in the wilderness, as we see with Jesus' baptism, not in the safety of a sacred space. And the act itself challenges us to ask where we are as a church doing the work of baptism. Where are we doing the work of heralding a new structure and a new way to the world? Are we locked away where only a few can hear? Or are we out in the world, on the edges, inviting and encouraging people to see that there is a different way and a new and special way to be revealed, a way of being in the kingdom of God? So this week, this special week, let's consider inviting and encouraging others to a life of faith, a life in which we love deeply and in which we care deeply for one another, a life in which we forgive and come together as a people of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our service continues with our affirmation of faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers on page 97 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's read the suffrages on suffrage B on page 98 of the Book of Common Prayer responsibly. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. For our colleagues today, most are found on page 98 and 99 in the Book of Common Prayer. Our colic for the day, Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior. 
who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A Collect for Sunday. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Colic for Peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Mission Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wooden wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. A prayer in the time of pandemic. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close, remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips, remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home, remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. Let us pray for these churches in the diocese, Epiphany Church in Denver, St. Aidan's Episcopal Church in Boulder, St. Andrew's in Cripple Creek, St. Paul's in Steamboat Springs, our Diocesan Standing Committee, Brigitte's Bounty Community Resources. Let us pray for those serving in harm's way, Grant, Mike, Sean, Rolly, Frank, and all those working as first responders, healthcare providers, and as law enforcement and military personnel. Let us pray for those seeking strength, guidance, and healing. Carol and Dave, Christine, Lauren, Bailey, Bob and Marcia, Helena, Reverend Mark, Dick, Bill, Carolyn, Ashley, the Brockman family, Susan and David, Janet, Julie, Toby and Molly, Linda, Christopher and Diana, 
Ryan, the Pharaoh family, Gabrielle, Julie and Reverend Peter, Heather, the Tiller family, and for those who have lost their jobs and anyone else impacted by COVID-19. Let us pray for those who have died. Fran, Domic, Eugene Covella, Robbie, Louise Wheezy Burton. This Sunday, we continue with our additional segment in our prayers, our birthday blessings. We have birthday records for many of you and a few anniversary records. But if we are missing your birthday, please send us an email so we can add that to our records. This Sunday, we'll celebrate all the birthdays this week. Maggie, Renee, Adele, enjoy our birthday solo. Mm -hmm. birthday blessing. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our service continues on page 101 with our general thanksgiving. Please join me as we pray together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Continuing on page 102. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our blessing this day is the fourfold Franciscan blessing. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half truths and superficial relationships that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression and exploitation of people that you may work for justice, freedom and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world, that you can do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. A few announcements for the good of the order this week. If you need pastoral care or you just want to talk, 
please contact me. We can Zoom, we can write letters, we can talk on the phone, and we can make arrangements for safe meetings with sometimes one on one side of a door and one on the other. Uh, we love to hear from you, so let us hear from you. We have suspended our abbreviated Eucharist until further notice, as many of you in the local area received consecrated element around Christmas. Uh, we will try to do that in the coming weeks again. It's just not quite safe. We do hold noonday prayer or Compline by Zoom, except on Saturday and Sunday. So join us and you can see all manner of your friends. Many of your seasonal friends are joining us. Thank you again and again to all those who make today's service possible in these days of Episcopal televangelists, the Reverend Richard Paxton, Rachel Rausch, our music director, Jackie Amthor, our communications director who makes our beautiful bulletin and newsletter, Sherry and Richard Paxton, our soloists, Robert Huber who creates our video, Ella Gruel and Deborah Smith and her family, and Phoebe Gruel who all serve as lay leaders and readers for our service. Help us to keep our parish prayer list updated and provide your prayer request to our church office. And we're also exploring safe ways to gather in small groups, so help us. Don't forget our annual meeting is coming up and if you don't make the annual meeting, that means we get to appoint you to whatever committees we wish. And we also would love to see your faces and we need your vote as we elect a new vestry and we ratify the budget that has been approved. Blessings to you all. Remember your pledges and support of St. Peter's of the Valley. Have a wonderful week. See